All right. Okay, so it's 3 or 3, let's get started. Welcome everyone. My name is Yuvika. I work at Rental Scale Up. I'm the editor at Rental Scale Up. Uh, for those who don't know, Rental Scale Up is a vacation rental um, industry website. We share analyses and reports about the vacation rental industry. Um, we also have a luxury property management brand called stainbart.com under which there are two luxury villas on the island of St. Bart that I also handle social media marketing for. So today um, we are gonna go through this workshop, which um, I'm, gonna go, I'm going to go through it for about 15 minutes, take you through this framework. And in the end, we would have 10 minutes for Q&A and um, some freebies for you as well. Um, now, you, it's possible that you, you don't believe that social media, especially Instagram, can help you um, generate qualified leads for your business. Maybe you've already put in some effort before with little result, or maybe you haven't given it a try yet because you have, because you simply don't believe that it could come in handy for you. Yet, yeah, I'm going to show you the success that we got using our exclusive framework and how you can replicate it for your business. Now, um, today's agenda. So we're gonna go through um, our consistent strategy that we use in order, to, um, in order to implement this framework that we already had in place. Uh, how we adapted this strategy during COVID-19, specifically this year um, in 2021, to, um, to help meet some goals that we had set for us. And then there will be the Q&A and resources. Now, if you don't have the right content or strategy in place, you will burn through your followers quite quickly, or you may not even give an opportunity to people or a reason to people to follow you. Um, so in the next hour, I'm gonna go through the challenges that we saw, the strategy that we adopted to meet our objectives and how we analyze whether the strategy was working for us in the first place or not and optimize it along the way. And um, we also made sure that we were documenting every single step, every single finding along the way. Um, and a result of that, well, one of the results of that is this workshop. So we, it's been created so you can follow along with our journey and understand the potential Instagram has to grow your business. And hopefully you can get the same kind of results. Um, whether you were a property manager or a listing site operator or even an industry vendor, you will see that a lot of the, a lot of the lessons that um, we learned along the way apply to your business as well when it comes to using Instagram. Uh, these are some of the results. Um, I want to say, though, if you think that I'm going a little too quickly, uh, please do keep an eye out for the follow-up email. You will receive a recording of the session and you will receive access to this deck that I'm presenting as well. So you can go through it on your own time as well. Um, I wanna start with the results that we got using this framework that I have just referred to. So as you can see, we got over 2,200 Instagram followers. This is from February, 2021 to July, 2021. And uh, in this time, we receive about 2,400 site sessions, traffic to our website, cnbar.com. And over 50% of the site traffic was through Instagram alone. Then, uh, and perhaps the most important bit is that we generated over 500 um, email, um, email leads in this time as well. Now, what do I mean by leads? These were, these are basically um, emails that we had collected and people who had, all, and who had received a, an, a welcome email from us. They knew about our brand. They knew um, what, they had, what they had opted in for. So, and, they, and they had agreed to be um, receiving, um, they had agreed to receive regular updates from us. So they had been introduced to our brand at this time. Um, obviously the question is, how did we gain these leads? How did we increase these followers and generate this traffic? So I, there were two components to the how, our consistent strategy and the tactics that we adopted during COVID-19. 
Um, let's start with our consistent strategy first. Um, now, the, the opportunities that we, throw, that we saw through Instagram was one, um, well, these were kind of our goals. This is what we wanted to achieve from Instagram. We didn't know at this time if it were possible. We wanted to get potential clients, of course, that's the priority. We wanted to grow our list to um, ensure that there was, that we could reach out to these people on multiple, multiple occasions and hopefully convert them into guests. And then we also wanted to build authority and cultivate trust because um, Sinbart is a very competitive luxury rental market and it has huge um, property it has a property management companies that are giants that are very well known. They are very well established. So we saw through Instagram an opportunity to build authority in a way that people who were booking with our, well, not our competitors because they were um, much, much bigger than our business, but people who were booking with these agencies would also enter our orbit and uh, then we would have the opportunity to turn them into our customers and book with us instead. Um, for that, uh, we this for that we created the sandbar.com Instagram funnel, which was created to lead our followers on a journey um, to inspire them into following us and opting into our email system, email sequence, nurture them through our email sequ sequence, and then convert them by getting them to book and retain them as customers through email broadcast. Um, the one thing that I want to get into real quick is, for example, an email sequence, for anybody who might not know, an email sequence is basically when someone opts into your um, email list, they receive an automated sequence of emails, depending on where they are in that journey. As soon as they sign up, they receive a confirmation that they have been signed in and they receive reminders periodically based on how you define the sequence. For example, today after our workshop ends, you can expect a follow-up email in the sequence, which has all the information that you need connected to this workshop in a follow-up. Um, the first thing that we needed to do in order to inspire people to join our lead, to join our email list, is to identify who we were talking to. Um, this is very basic funnel stuff. Um, knowing your audience is kind of the, is the first step of marketing, obviously, regardless of what your medium for marketing is. Um, so we define the personas of our audience and we, and we initially got it wrong. Um, because initially when we were on Instagram, we were sharing a lot of content around um, basically little tidbits and factoids about St. Bart for people who were planning travel to St. Bart. Um, and in our minds, we, we thought of these people as first time travelers. Um, people who, we thought people who are looking for information on St. Bart would be people who have never been to St. Bart but we were wrong, as you will see along the way. Uh, basically, if you see the screenshot right here, um, this is the kind of post that we were sharing at first, which had, some, uh, which had some information about the island. And then when we asked questions that, that were geared towards people who had already visited, for example, when we asked them to identify a street, which is something that someone who had already been to St. Bart would know, um, we received a lot more engagement. For example, in our previous post, we had been averaging about eight to 10 comments. And on this one, um, we received 58. And that was a huge difference. So it was an instant indicator that people who were following us or people who came across our posts who were interested in St. Bart, they had already been there. So we had to recalibrate how we were talking to people through Instagram based on this learning. So we know that we're talking to first time travelers. We know that we're talking to repeat travelers and we know that we want to talk to past guests as well, but we just increased the times we were talking to repeat travelers because we realized there were more of those. Also a part of knowing 
who your audience is, um, is knowing how, what language you speak to them in. For example, St. Bart is a Caribbean island in the French West Indies. And St. Bart is French speaking, but we only post in English almost exclusively. The reason for that is a majority of the travelers to St. Bart are from the US and Canada. And uh, whether it's due to proximity or flight connections or just the popularity in general of the island or because of a combination of these factors or some other factors, most of our audience is from the US and um, Canada. So it made sense for us to post only in English. Well, mostly in English. Once you know who you're talking to, um, then we, you need to know what you will say to them. And uh, so we, and we have to make sure that you are, uh, you, you are sharing it, you're using all the real estate on your Instagram to share this information. So we knew that we wanted to build authority and build trust, which meant that we wanted to be a guide in a way for our followers or non-followers alike. Um, that was why they would talk to us. That's what we would, uh, that's what we would talk to them about. And our Instagram page reflected that. Let's take a quick look at our Instagram to show what I'm talking about. So this is the sainbot.com Instagram page. As soon as you enter the page, you can see just in, by the name alone that this is the St. Bart Guide. And as you can see here, the bio states, I help you create lifelong happy memories in St. Bart. Tap link below to get my free insider's guide to St. Bart. The message is very clear. This is about St. Bart. You can find information here about St. Bart. And if you're looking for a guide to help you plan your travel, um, to help you make a decision at the time you are booking in the future, you will think of us. You can think of us. And uh, just, these are all our highlights and our posts. Um, as you can see, since then, we've already gained a lot of followers. Going back to um, the presentation, once you've defined your messaging, the next step would be creating a hook. And our hook, as you can see, is right here. Our free insider's guide to St. Bart. You can see that's the link in our bio as well. And we find, and we promote it in a lot of different ways. Um, now, what is a hook? Basically, if you need people to sign, to sign up for your email list, which involves providing their private information, you need to give them a reason to do so. Why should they share their private information with you? What do they get out of it? Well, in our case, it's this insider's guide, which is a primary hook for a lot of the content that we share. It's always linked back to this. Once you've created the hook, it's time to convert the leads that are coming in through your Instagram or potential leads that may come through your Instagram. Converting leads um, would basically there are three aspects to converting these leads. One is obviously you should be creating offers um, to, to give a reason to your Instagram followers to actually think about booking with you. For example, here, um, this particular post has two aspects to it that pertain to creating offers. Here we're offering an exclusive discount to anybody who signs up for, for our mailing list. Um, when they book with us. And they also get the um, exclusivity of booking directly with the owner. So both these aspects have been played up to make sure that anybody who sees this, who's planning travel to St. Bart and is looking for a villa has that much more reason to consider us. The second step would be, or the second aspect of converting your leads would be promoting your mailing list itself. You cannot talk about selling your product all the time, of course, but you can encourage people to enter the funnel and then stay with you for the journey um, so that in the future, you can um, promote your product to them. For example, these are some of the posts that we shared where we were sharing information about travel restrictions or vaccination updates on the island. And here you can see we are encouraged to, uh, 
we are asking them to subscribe to our email list to receive regular updates. The third thing um, you should also focus on when thinking of converting leads is driving website traffic. Um, your website is the home of all your properties. Um, and once, once your followers know of your website as an address to go to to find information, they are bound to also, you, you have that many more opportunities to um, promote your properties to them. Um, in these cases, you can, you can see, we use the story swipe up um, feature really, really prominently all the time to drive traffic to the website, whether it was through um, by sharing travel restrictions for St. Bar, whether it was telling them about new openings in St. Bar, or it was directing them to the villas, um, villa pages themselves. Um, when you are, the biggest part of your strategy is going to be measuring the performance of your strategy. And uh, this is the quantitative part of the measurement, uh, tracking your performance growth through metrics, whether it's tracking um, follower growth or reach interactions, website tap, story reach or swipe ups or all of it. Um, you do need to remember that although all of these metrics are important on their own, but all of them may not apply to you at that time. You need, it, the metrics you should be tracking and you should be paying attention to should align with your goals. For example, if you are a brand new business on Instagram and you have no followers and you have no reach basically, um, it, is, it is more important for you to reach out to more people, to um, expand your network. So you will, uh, you will focus more on things like follower growth, your reach and interactions. Because at that point, your priority is to grow traffic to your Instagram page and then they're on. But if you already, uh, if you already have a significant following on Instagram, and uh, you get plenty of interactions, uh, then you need to, you need to dig deeper to go further into analytics to see, to focus on analytics that focus on conversion, for example, how many people are tapping through to your websites, how many people are swiping up on your stories to go to your website, again, site traffic, how many people are actually signing up for your email list through um, the posts that you're creating connected to your email list. So know which objectives apply to you. And for that, obviously understanding what each metric means um, is very important. You need to know what each metric stands for. This is a more qualitative um, kind of analysis. This is more subjective and analyzing sentiment. Um, but it's all, this is also a very important indicator of your perception. So if one of our goals is to build authority, is to be, trust, to be a trusted authority that people turn to, to find information about St. Bart, right? Whether it's about restrictions or restaurants or anything else. Um, if that's who, we want to be seen as, then people, they, we know it's working if people ask us questions about that. Um, because if, if, for example, these are screenshots of people asking us about travel restrictions in St. Bart at different times or where they can go, or for example, we get queries about um, where they can find a good photographer in St. Bart, or what's the best place to go for dinner at a certain time, what's the best beachfront lunch in St. Bart. Since we're receiving these queries, um, we know that what we're doing is working in terms of establishing us as a source of information. And that's why analyzing sentiment of the queries that you receive is important. Um, then another way of, perform of uh, measuring performance is obviously analyzing lead conversion. How many people are signing up to your mailing list? Are you receiving any direct booking inquiries through your Instagram? Um, are you receiving any interest in your villas, in your properties at all, even if they're not booking level inquiries? And that's what you should be tracking as well. Now, excuse me. Um, so we put together this framework um, and this workshop was not the only product of all the documentation that we did. 
um, we created a program to help you implement this framework, which is our Rental Scale Up Instagram Framework course. Um, this is a six week course with um, weekly with weekly workshops, live workshops where I help with implementation. Um, and uh, you also receive access to email um, to the modules via email and access to a private community where you can discuss with your peers your weekly growth and you can get feedback as well. And other than this, you get access to our existing framework of the, how we created the content, going into the details of how to create this funnel and how this funnel might be different, might look different for your business specifically, depending on the size of your business or the goals of your business and how you can generate content while saving time instead of having to create content from scratch every time, which I know is a big issue, uh, especially with property managers. Um, and so that's and that's why we created this course. The course starts on September 20, 2021, but enrollments are now open. There are only 10 spots available because like I said, there will be live workshops each week. And we wanna make sure that the group is small enough that there's enough attention uh, paid to everyone's requirements. And uh, you can find the link for the course in the presentation. And it will also be in the confirmation email that I sent to you in the follow-up email that I sent to you as well as in the chat. I will leave that at the end of the workshop. Now, we've been discussing our consistent strategy. This is something that we had prior to COVID-19, but we implemented that. Um, this year, obviously, um, since February onwards, the environment started, started experiencing a lot of travel restrictions on and off um, or different degrees of restrictions. And uh, we had to adapt the strategy to, well, to the pandemic, to COVID-19 restrictions and make it work for us. So now we're gonna go into how we did that. Um, first up, our challenges because of COVID-19, the biggest challenge was cancellations and refunds. Both the villas were, well, the one villa that was operational was experiencing a lot of cancellations because people didn't know when they could visit or there was a lot of uncertainty around when the island might reopen. The island was closed for a period and then it reopened, but only to vaccinated travelers. So because of this, we did experience a lot of cancellations and refunds. On top of that, we were also um, launching a new villa with zero bookings. The um, Villa Doman is a brand new launch for us. And uh, it was opening at a time when travel restrictions were already in place. Um, and the water restrictions were changing frequently, like I said, and we were finding it very difficult to keep on top of the restrictions. But of course, keeping on top of them was a requirement for us to make sure so that we knew what, what to anticipate in terms of bookings. You know, it, um, they were both directly linked with each other. So the opportunity here was, if, well, first of all, the question was that if we were finding it so difficult to keep up with these travel restrictions, we could only imagine how much more trouble the travelers were having, people who were planning travel to St. Barth. Um, so we thought that this would be a good opportunity for us to share what we were looking up already. For example, we decided to provide assistance to our followers or to or to people who were planning travel to St. Bart um, by sharing what we knew. Uh, why was, like I mentioned, our future guests needed to know what to expect. Um, and we did it by going through local news magazines, local news sources, the St. Bart municipality and local authority Facebook pages and international resources, for example, CDC web and Worldometer. And we collated this information and published an article on the sandbar.com blog, which we would update every month. And every month as this blog post was updated with the most recent travel restrictions, this update would also be included in our monthly newsletter. And we were obviously also publishing this on our Instagram. That's how people were being led to our email list. For example, you can see here um, our highlight COVID-19 updates um, or travel advisory. If anyone were to click on this, 
they would quickly be able to see what were the most recent travel restrictions for St. Mark. Um, if you go to the end of the update, you see the most recent post which we made today. Sorry, this is the next. This is today. We were we updated the blog post today because there have been new restrictions in St. Bart. And um, anybody who's looking for that information right now, which people are, and I'll show you, um, they can simply go to our stories and find some information ready for them. Um, for example, today I posted, a, um, today we posted this on our Instagram page. And one of the comments was, where can we find current travel restrictions to St. Bart? That's one of the first comments that we received on the post. So people were already looking for this information and we are ready by having updated the travel blog, the post, and having posted that on our Instagram. Um, but providing assistance um, is not enough within itself. You have to build trust. Why would someone come to you looking for this information? Why would you be your their go-to source? You have to build enough trust so that they can rely on you to do this. Um, if you're building trust, you need to make sure that you're following all of these steps. Step one is obviously to identify your audience. We did that before. We knew who we were talking to um, at the time of setting up our initial funnel. Step two is being accurate. Um, you have to double check your sources each time before you're sharing some information publicly. Um, if possible, make sure any piece of data that you get, you compare it with one more source at least to make sure that it's accurate. So you just minimize any, um, any errors that could happen. And only share when you are absolutely 100% confident that you have the correct information. Um, it's very tempting to want to break the news, um, but that's not your job as someone, as a vacation rental professional, for example. Your job is to be reliable, not the first. So always keep that in mind. Consistency is important. This applies to um, whether or not you're talking about travel restrictions. This is, this is going to apply to your Instagram usage, your social media usage in general. If you're consistent, it will pay off. You have to ask yourself, how can I um, dedicate time to researching this and putting all this information together, but have it take the least amount of time possible? And it is possible. You obviously can schedule your content ahead of time. It is, it is a big time saver. And also learn the value of curate versus create. You don't have to create all the content there is. Um, curation is just as important and can be just as useful. So know when you can use curation. Um, be responsive. If um, at some point people are going to expect you to have the answers because that's who you establish yourself as, someone who knows about St. Bart and the travel restrictions there or the travel information there. So people will ask you questions and that's a good sign, right? That's, that means that they know that they can talk to you, they can find information from you, you are their guide. Um, but you have to make sure that you're dedicated, dedicating time to responding to them on a daily basis. It doesn't have to be a long time, maybe 10 minutes every day to 30 minutes every day, depending on the volume of requests that you get, volume of queries that you get and the time that you have. And make sure that you're documenting the responses that you're sending. How that helps is because you will see that there are um, a lot of questions that are asked frequently. So if you have them documented, if you have the responses documented, you don't have to be saying the same thing over and again when you can just copy and share. And it will also be easier to delegate this to someone else so that you can um, dedicate your time to other more important pursuits, for example. And what to watch out for. Obviously, you will have your own individual challenges. This is just some, these are just some things that we noticed along the way. Um, know when to not participate. Um, for example, like a, sub a topic might seem very innocuous, but it will be still incendiary in some ways because opinions, right? For example, we shared an update on our Instagram that Sinbart was now open to vaccinated travelers. And obviously there is a significant number of people who are anti-vax 
and uh, they were not on board with this information. We completely avoided talking to people who were just expressing their opinion. For example, if you can see this, there's someone commenting total BS. And before that is, what if you had, a, what if you had COVID and still had antibodies? Better than a fake shot. So this is just opinion. There's nothing we can say to this that will change their mind. And it's not relevant to our goals either. So we did not respond to this, did not acknowledge it. Um, but here, there is a genuine question. For example, this person's asking, what about kids? It's insane. Yes, they are, they are posing their question a little brashly, but it is a, it is a genuine query. And we told them, that, okay, the rules are different for children under 10 or people under 18, and here's where you can find all the information. So know when to not participate. Avoiding speculation. Uh, this is a really interesting one because in St. Bart, for example, this year, um, St. Bart was close to, close to people for tourism. It, you could only go to St. Bart if you had, um, if you qualified one of the essential reasons to enter the island. For example, if you had a medical emergency or if you had an unavoidable professional engagement and that. Um, yet there were villa um, rental companies uh, or local companies who had an arrangement with the local government because of which there were people who were able to enter the island after fulfilling certain requirements, of course. This was not official. This was not something that for example, the French government, a statement the French government had put out. We knew this, and it could have been tempting to tell people that, hey, you can still go there, um, but we didn't. For example, here, um, a member is asking us, I've been told by my friends that they were able to come through boat or if they come through St. Martin without with the US passport, they won't need to have vaccination. So th this is what they've heard from people they trust. And we knew that this was true, that it is possible, but it was not official. So we made sure that we shared just an official, the screenshot of an official statement, which stated that you have to be vaccinated and that nothing else is confirmed. And that worked for us because it helps us not get embroiled in any type of controversy. Avoiding speculation, then own your mistakes you will not do everything correctly. It's impossible. Even as a brand or as an individual, it's, you are bound to make mistakes on your Instagram. The idea is to make sure that you are accountable, you're owning your mistakes, because it is, so, it is very simple to acknowledge that you made a mistake and apologize and move on. It's very fast. For example, um, we were sharing information about restaurants and cafes on our Instagram, and we had a user who was quite disgruntled because of the travel restrictions. And at one point they commented something very rude. Um, when is the island going to open up? Stop talking about coffee. You've been dormant for ages. And now that the border is closed, we have fun polls every day. Um, they were not having it, right? And uh, what we did was we responded to them and then we posted a screenshot of their comment to our story saying, hey, we, this is a comment that we got, but we are sharing information about the island and here's where you can find information. The mistake that we made was that we did not, um, we ended up posting the person's username, which can be perceived as a personal attack. And that's what this person assumed we were doing and they were right in doing so. Um, as soon as, we, as soon as we saw their way of things, which was instantly we realized that we could have posted it without posting their name. We removed the story, we told them, we apologized uh, to them and we explained to them that our intent was not to call them out individually and also that we are property owners in St. Bart and we are also facing issues because of the restrictions. Um, and since we were so open about the fact that we had made a mistake and that we knew that we had made a mistake, the journey went very quickly from them being very disgruntled and feeling targeted to uh, thanking us for sharing the information and then hoping to meet us when they were on the island next. So be open to accepting your mistakes. There are only three takeaways that you do take away from this workshop. Understand that there is opportunity within crises, as we did. Um, Share what you know, and you know a lot. What I mean by that is 
there's already a lot of information that you have to process in order to keep your vacation rental business running. You already know a lot about your market, about the area. You just have to share what you already know. It's important to do that. Create robust systems to take guesswork out of performance measurement. There's a lot of things that you will do by instinct and that's fine, but there has to be objective evidence that points to whether you're, what you're doing is working or not working, because otherwise you have no way of really knowing if you're performing well or not, and if you should change something, what you should keep, what you should take out. Um, once again, we can help you do that. Um, and um, like I mentioned, the Inst our Instagram framework course starts on September 20th. Um, the course is meant to be very, very hands-on to lead you through the journey that we have taken, um, help you recreate the results that we have gotten, but also pay attention to your individual needs. Um, and it's created in a way that you will have a lot of folk, you will also have a lot of support from your peers um, to make sure that they are able to chime in with their uh, feedback, with their notes, and you can do that too. And the support from a community makes a lot of difference when you're trying to do something new, of course, um, or when you're trying to improve something that already exists. So hopefully um, you'd sign up if you're interested. Um, you, the link is right here and I'll also share it in the chat. And um, we have about 10 minutes for a Q&A. Um, Thibault, do you have any questions that you think? Yes. First, thank you, Yvika. Um, I really appreciate it. You, you know, we on time, we even have a few minutes. So I'm not sure, I will start with the first question, but if you, any of you, uh, uh, you know, want to turn a microphone on, a video on, to ask a question, just go ahead. Uh, don't need to, for typing anymore. It's just, no, yeah. just do that. Um, the question I have for you, Yuvika, you showed, you, know, you showed where, I think the big piece of our, what we did with going to COVID-19 was this highlight, right? But, Imagine, I don't know what a highlight is. So what's a highlight? Can you show it again? And how does that work? Because there's like, they were like screen, it was moving. What's a highlight? What's, what's the story? Or how, what's, how, what's the link between the two? Sure, yeah. Um, I'm going to try to make it as concise as possible. Um, so Instagram lets you share information in different formats. You can obviously publish photos and videos to your feed but then also to your stories. Stories, you share information in the same way, but this information only lasts for 24 hours after which it auto expires. So anything you're sharing in your stories is temporary. But if there is key information you're sharing in your stories that you would like to keep on your profile for as long as you want or permanently, that's where highlights come in. Highlights are basically a selection of stories that you wanna make permanent on your page. So for example, let's go to our Instagram page, right? Uh -huh. um, this is the sainbart.com uh, Instagram profile. And if you click on our profile image, you will see the stories that we posted today. For example, this is the story, bringing back this roundup. Um, this is from yesterday. Then we posted, do you have any suggestions for the list? It's and then, for example, the most recent one was the article on St. Bar travel restrictions and how it's been updated. And people can swipe up to read the article. In fact, you can also do it on web, for example, for me to demo you. If I click on see more here, it will lead me to the article. So it's something we talked about, right? You said, oh, we can drive traffic to the website. It's because in stories, actually, you can put a link to anything you want, right? Yes. And that is exclusive to stories. In Instagram posts, links are not clicked through. So, which is a bit of a difficulty, right? Um, with stories, you can always have a link connected to your story. But who has access to the swipe up option is also, it's not available to everybody. So, we, we, but we cover all of this in the course. So then, so then I create the story, but as you said, the story create a lot of engagement. Actually, what's interesting is that People may not see the stories if they're not subscribers, for example, but if they are, they will see the stories and they are a lot of engagement. And as you said, then after 24 hours, they disappear. 
So a way to save them is the highlights, right? So these were the highlights. This is where you 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 assemble, you get put together stories, right? That's what you do. Yeah, yeah. The the stories will remain for you permanently. You will be able to see them in your archive. But there are some stories that you want your user, anybody who comes to your profile, to also be able to see whenever they want. And those stories you can select and you can put them under a highlight. For example, I selected only the most recent um, stories we created about travel restrictions and yeah. updated the COVID-19 highlight. Similarly, anybody who wants information about Villa Doman, for example, this is a highlight that I have created, which is created out of past stories that we put together to create this highlight. Right, so you don't have to create things new all the time because you basically create a best of your stories about one topic and put pin it you pin it in a way right on top of yeah. your account yeah. and it's direct access yeah. very interesting that's, that's it was really one of the key of the success you had i think this year with this uh covid19 uh, update yeah it 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 was really relevant and it still is as you can see even today for example again this is a this is a topic that people in our interest people who are interested in going to Zimbabwe are interested in it so as the thing as things stand now and I kind of believe they will be this way for a long time. I think this will always be an important subject. But even if this were outside of a pandemic, this still applies. Whether you can share other information about your market, but and then people can look to you to find for that kind of information. So, anyone has any question? Any other question? Feel free to uh, just like speak on a microphone or just write down and. Thank you, Kelly, for your message. Um, Thank you, Kelly, yeah, for attending and for your message. Okay, so I think it was pretty pretty thorough. Then and we like you know forty five right right on time. So what again? So what's next, uh, Yuvika? What to expect? Um, you can expect a follow up email where you will get a link to watch to watch the recording of the session, and you will get also a link to be able to view the presentation that I was going through so you can uh, you can peruse it on your own time and uh, it will also include a link to sign up for the course that I had mentioned which starts on September 20th and uh, you can always respond to directly to the email that I will send if you have any questions about the presentation about the upcoming course and it will come directly to me perfect Thanks, Yurika. Thank you, everyone, for attending the session today, either live or through the replay. Thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate you coming and attending, and I hope you got some value out of this. Uh, it may seem a bit complex, but it's very easy when someone is helping you through this, and you will see that. Um, and you will see that in the course, it's important for you to know all these components just so not only can you do this yourself, but you can also potentially um, you can also potentially delegate this to someone else and delegate with confidence. You know, so you know what to look out for when someone else is doing this for you as well. So thank you, everyone, and uh, please watch out for my email. And I hope you have a great day.